You with me this morning? Yes, you thinking, huh? Yes, We're so valuable. But I have to appreciate that value. How can I make prayer to the all in all and not get up with the mindset and the confidence, not just the feeling, because the feeling is the emotion of it, and that's a fleeting thing. But I can get up with the confidence that my prayer connected to that unlimited source, which is Allah himself, which is also myself. We are not the supreme being. What separates us from the supreme being? He's supreme. He is supreme in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allah. We are striving to grow in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. But it's what do you bring to the table? What do I bring to the table? And this is what's important because we come on Sundays and Wednesdays and Fridays to hear a message. But do I come as one who is preparing himself and bringing something to the table? Or am I coming empty handed? See, to the degree that we are prepared it's to the degree that Allah can use us. So we should always be what? Ready. And when you and I are always ready, then at any given moment, at any given time, Allah can ride in on you or ride in on someone else prepared to help you. But we got to have something that's no reason why in 2019 we should be raggedy, broke, and out of doors. We believe that God has come. We believe that he visited America. So now we must begin to show the reality of the power of that God that came and is making men and making women. You see what he has done with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Elijah, Allahu Akbar, Elijah is not dead. Elijah is alive. Elijah started, he came in up to his eyeballs in mud, only with a third grade education. And now our Elijah sits at the right hand of God absolutely in power. How do you know this is true? Because all of us came in as Negroes. Or let me say so-called Negroes, pimps, hustlers, liars, thieves, all of the above. And then we are, we are test the waters, even though we may not have been there, we are test the waters, dibble and dabble. And the beauty of it is, through the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, raise you and I up out of such a condition to set you and I on top of the world. But then, Elijah Muhammad departed from us. He's the Jesus in the book that the Quran also say, and they thought they killed him, but they killed him not. He departed in 1977. And in his departure, 75, thank you, he departed in 1975, and one stood back up in 1977. And the nation, for all practical purposes, fell. And when the nation fell, that one stood back up in 77, reestablishing the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And in that reestablishment of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, look at the work of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan now for 64 years of service. But he's not a, he's not a, a good song. 
He's a man that's teaching us in our midst the reality of God of what you and I could also be. So we marvel at the minister. But when he meets you, what does he say? It's my honor to meet you. But is it an honor for yourself? To wake up in the morning and look in the mirror with a new look, a refreshed look, and say, it's an honor to meet you. Or do I get up frustrated? Do I get up booted up in the mirror because of the way we think? Will you come today, brothers and sisters, to Muhammad's Mosque number 45? a place where you can sit yourself in heaven at once. The power of God of what we're looking for sits right up in our own being. Now the question is, will I act on it? So I'm going to invite you all again every 7.30, every Friday night at 7.30, come to Muhammad's Mosque number 45. Study with us. Because it's called self-improvement, the basis for community development. And then when you get up from that study, go to work. And then come back and then talk to us about how you have been successful in your week by Allah's permission. That's what this is about, brothers and sisters. So it's always a great honor, always a great privilege to introduce brothers and sisters, our beloved brother, who has been working for and with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam now for 30 years. And in his work, I know 32, but yes, sir, I got you. The beauty of it is, brothers and sisters, He is a human being that's been on this course. And when you're on this course, helping the man who's been given the hardest job ever given to a man, what Allah told the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So it tells us this is not a light work, work. That it tells us that this is a hard job. But the life of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the life of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan shows us that the job can be done. Is that right? So our brother has been on his job, and he's been doing a wonderful job on his job. And let's receive him with a thunderous round of applause, our beloved brother, student minister, student regional minister, brother Dr. Abdul Halim Muhammad. Let's receive him with a round of applause. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And that just simply means God is the greatest. As-salamu alaykum. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness there is no God but Allah. I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I'm a student of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I can never thank Allah enough for his intervention in our affairs and the person of Master Fahd Muhammad, the great Makdi who traveled 9,000 miles to seek and to save that which was lost. We can find no other people more fitting the description of the lost sheep, the lost coin, prodigal son, the children of Israel, than the black man and the black woman of North America. We thank Allah for not just prophesizing through his prophets that he would come, but we thank him for demonstrating his love by coming himself and visiting us in North America and seeking to find one who he could teach, he could lead, and he could guide and leave him among us to prove that in fact we had a visitation from God. The one I speak of is the man that gave you Malcolm X. There is no Malcolm X without him. The man that gave you Muhammad Ali, for there is no Muhammad Ali without him. The man I speak of is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, our leader, teacher, and guide, the eternal leader of the nation of Islam. We thank him. We thank him again and again and again for both of them, meaning Allah and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, for preparing one and leaving one among us 
that would represent grace and mercy in our midst. The man I speak of is the man I have attempted to represent in this city for the last 32 years and in the Southwest region since 1994. A man who is a star without equal, a man with impeccable character, a man whose love fuels his courage to stand up and to fight for us and to speak for us. He is the last man standing. He is the watchman on the wall. The one I speak of is the Honorable Minister, Lord Farrakhan, and I greet you once again, my beloved brothers and sisters, and greet words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Please give everyone who has come before us a round of applause for their efforts. We thank Allah for our helper and brother, student minister Eric Muhammad, who has been indispensable to me in helping to serve you. And he spoke of something, he taught, spoke of study group, self-improvement study group, self-improvement, the basis for community development. And I would urge each and every one of us to make a, a extra effort uh, to come to self-improvement study group <coughs> because it goes beyond just speaking from the rostrum, which is like, in a sense, delivering an oral message. Some things, brothers and sisters, you have to sit down and you have to study for yourself. You're really going to have to delve into the books, into the wisdom of God, and use the example of Minister Farrakhan for us to find our path. For Minister Farrakhan's desire is not that we worship him, but that we follow him. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's mission is the resurrection of the dead. And his desire isn't that we worship him, but that we follow him. And the Nation of Islam, as Brother Eric pointed out, fell 1975, not because we were bad people, but because we worshiped the Honorable Elijah Muhammad instead of worshiping the God he taught us to worship. So once he was from among us and removed from among us, like most people were caught up in some cases a personality or a charismatic character cult, when the personality is removed from us, we unfortunately lose ourselves. And it wasn't too long after his departure, then within six months, they took his picture down out of the school. It wasn't within uh, a year, less than a year, or a little bit more over a year, that they began to denigrate uh, everything that he taught. Sisters came out of their garments, brothers came out of their uniforms, broke up everything that we thought we knew. We began now to sell off our properties and all the, the things that we had in mass that it took the Honorable Elijah Muhammad 40 years to build. And some of us are so impatient with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and uh, we, we don't believe in spirituality. We want the horizontal growth. We want uh, luxury, money, good homes. We want all of those things, but we're not willing to pay the spiritual price it takes to not only accumulate those things, but to keep them. For if God was to bless you with abundance of wealth, and you and I lack character, we won't keep that wealth too long. So, oh, my brothers and my sisters, I want to talk to you today. I'm in a very, very happy mood today. I'm very happy. It's, it is old happy day. <laughs> it is old happy day. And um, just going to uh, put everybody on notice, we're not going to be here long today. At least I, I, I pray we're not here longer than four hours. But... <laughs> But I, I have a message I want to deliver to you, brothers and sisters, and I hope that you will hang with me uh, while I, I, I bring this forward. The title of this lecture comes from uh, the Edwin Hawkins uh, singer's classic hit, Oh Happy Day. And it was recorded in 1967 in, in the Ephesian Church of God in Christ in Berkeley, California. Now, this song was released in 1968 and is one of the first gospel songs that I recall, uh, you know, that I recall, uh, to be heard widely over R&B stations. And it reached number two in the weekly Billboard charts and number 28 on the year-end charts. And that's pretty unusual. Uh, for a gospel song really to be hitting in the r and I'm talking about the tame time of James Brown, Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud, The Temptations, The Supremes, The Child Lights, The Stylistic, y'all don't know nothing about that anyway. 
but nonetheless, a gospel song. Oh, happy day. And in 1970, the Edwin Hawkins Singers won a, a Grammy Award in the Best Soul Gospel Performance category for Oh, Happy Day. The song is a hymn written by Philip Doddridge. He was an 18th century congregationalist, minister, educator, and hymn writer. Now, you may wonder why a Muslim would be lifting the title of a Christian song for his lecture at a mosque. Well, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teach us that a good Christian is a good Muslim. Right. And a good Muslim is a good Christian. Right. I'll get into that in a moment. Let me stop right here and let's go to uh, our first slides, first couple of slides, because this is what I do. Everybody knows how I'm going to go. This is like, oh, there he goes. And we're about to go in. Y'all ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nothing that I'm saying to you, regardless of where I get it from, what way I fix it, according to my own personality, my own point of view, is my wisdom. It's not mine. It comes from the root, which is Master Fahd Muhammad, the great Mahdi, who came here, the one in the middle, the one holding the book. The book he's holding is the Holy Quran. And in this is the only picture we really have of him in terms of him uh, posing for a picture because we don't worship images. But there's a message in that picture. And that picture is the first thing that God revealed through Prophet Muhammad 1400 years ago, peace and blessings be upon him, was Iqra, read. So I say to you, brothers and sisters, a good lecture is a good lecture. It'll get you fired up. It's good for evangelism, but you and I have to learn how to read for ourselves. Y'all all right? Oh, happy day. All right. He taught his servant, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Torah, which is the Old Testament, the Injil, which is the gospel. He taught him the wisdom, supreme wisdom. And he taught him the book. The book is the Quran. El Kitab, the book. He taught his servant that. And he made him a messenger to us. Styled as the children of Israel. We are the true children of Israel. Not these Johnny come lately fakers that are over there in that land that they stole. That is not even their land. These are Europeans, colonizers. Wearing our clothes. You ever heard the story of uh, truth and lie on a hot day? Walking down the road together. And uh, lie challenged truth to a swimming contest. He said, man, look, take off your clothes. We're going to jump in this water. We're going to swim to the other side of the lake. So they jumped in the water, and truth is stroking. Huh. Truth is, and all of a sudden, he noticed Lying behind him no more. He gets up and he see lie got back up on shore and put on truth's clothes. Yes, so some observers saw truth chasing lie down the road and they said, mm, there's naked truth chasing after a well dressed lie. We have been living in a world that is a well-dressed lie. Yes, sir. It's well-dressed. It looks so good, so delectable, so attractive that it is like the spider web that catches lightweight creatures. And then the spider comes. And the spider doesn't eat the insect right away. The spider comes and he injects. He has like a tube and he injects inside of that fly or that lightweight creature an enzyme yes, that breaks that creature down from the inside right. and then what he does he sucks up the essence and just leaves the shell oh, yeah. and if you look at many of us we are just the shell yeah. or as Howard Cosell would say Muhammad Ali you're just the shadow of the man you used to be yes, some of us are the shadow of the men and women that we could be yes, if we were just Get out of this web of lies and deceit that we're in 
because he sucked the essence of God up out of us and all we have is the form of godliness. So he taught his servant the book and the wisdom and he gave him supreme wisdom so that he would be able to break down the book, go into the book, not get caught into in the lies that have been put in the book and the truth, untruths that have been added to the book and be able to extract from the book the medicine you and I need so we can heal our sin sick soul Amen. the holy Quran makes no sense to black people because you have been so removed from the holy Quran many of us came here Muslims but we had we were robbed so thoroughly that when someone reintroduces Islam to you you had think either it's a heathen religion or you go all the way over here now you're trying to be a black Arab and the white Arab is not the original Arab He's not the original person from Arabia. All of them, whether it be the Jew or the Arab, only been there 6,000 years. So teaches the most honorable like The Semites only been there 6,000 years. As the scripture tells us that the sons of God saw the daughters of men and saw that they were fair. And they took them to themselves and race mixing began and that is how they came about. But all of that area was black. From what you call Africa all the way to India was called by the Greeks Ethiopia, which means the land of the black-faced people. All the way to India. And there are some Indians, if you look at them, particularly if you look at Bangladesh and those who are in the southern push down, they're blacker than you and me. They just got the hair we had when we put that stuff in it and their noses are thin their lips are thin but other than that they're as black as you and me y'all all right yes, hang with me now so he taught his servant the honorable Elijah Muhammad and gave him wisdom and uh, uh, an invincible truth that is yet to be defeated yes, so instead of engaging us they dismiss us. They call us names from a distance. They don't invite us on no television show to debate what we believe. Because they know if they expose us to the people, well, we can speak for ourselves. They talk about us, but they never talk to us. They're afraid to talk to us because they know the power of this wisdom coming out of the mouth of the least of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the honorable Louis Farrakhan students, will dispel their lies and wake you up overnight. Y'all all right? And of course, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad left behind one who, like unto Aaron, is to Moses, is his spokesman. And you can't have a prophet like unto Moses unless you got a people that's in the condition of Moses' people. This is so-called 2019, and when you look at going back to 1619, which is the official date that they date us being brought here, the slaves being brought here, though we have been in this hemisphere since 1555, so teach the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, but those 64 hidden years is what it took to break down an African prince, an African princess, a king, a queen, an artisan, a, a, a warrior, down to a bunch of Negroes. We didn't come here slave, we were enslaved. And he said, well, why you got to spend this time talking about this kind of stuff? Because, brothers and sisters, if I just introduce Islam to you, you all of a sudden be walking around here. Here you are, June bug from, from, from Fifth Ward. Huh? Petey from Sunnyside. Huh? Chili Red from Third Ward. And all of a sudden, now you're Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Hey, come on, brother. You, what do you, you got? You're talking some South Park Arabic. Start taking martial arts, and now you Bruce Leroy. <laughs> we'll just, we'll, these six words before you fall asleep will, will summarize all of the teachings that Honorable Elijah Muhammad has, has been given by God himself and through the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is accept your own and be yourself. <laughs> be yourself. Praise be to Allah. But the scriptures say that Moses would be made a god unto Pharaoh. That's right. Listen clearly. God would make him a god to Pharaoh. Yes, sir. And he would make Aaron his prophet or his spokesman. Right. Well, you're looking at it right now. 
you're looking at that very thing right now. But the, 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 the secret, well, I should say, the way Satan works is this. He makes you think that what you're experiencing happened 4,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, and you can't even see that in your current circumstances, you are fulfilling the book right now. And when I say from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that God visited America, it's hard for you to believe because you don't think you're worthy of a visit from God. Like, what you talking about, man? You know, I'm, I'm all that in a bag of chips. You act like that. But deep down inside, all of us don't really see our value in the eyes of God. Let me put it another way. Master Fahd Muhammad said to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I would destroy nations for you, Elijah. Right. Meaning our people. Yes, sir. You don't even grasp the thought that God would destroy the whole planet for you. Yes, to free you. And that he would bring the greatest government that's ever been in the last 6,000 years to its knees. Because of its injustice to you yes, and the Native American and its own poor. That's because you don't believe your value because, hell, I can't, even get my, I can't even get my refund check on time. So I can't get my dog to roll over. I can't get my children to obey me. I can't get my husband to look out for me. I can't get my wife to do th So you don't think you have any worth whatsoever and we put on this false bravado. Man, you disrespected me. So you're going to kill somebody because they, they bumped into you. Stepped on your shoes. They scratched your car. You, they looked at you funny. They they talked to your woman, even though you 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 run around with three or four other women. You get mad because somebody hitting on your woman when you you should have been paying attention. I'm just saying. So you and I have been given an opportunity, brothers and sisters. We're the greatest generation ever produced by our people. Yes, but we're not the wisest. We need guidance. Yes, and God's mercy has given us guidance by him coming himself, raising up a fountainhead of wisdom in the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and leaving for you somebody that makes it so plain a fool would understand everything that's being said. You may not agree with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan because of the way he says it so brash. Well, that's how a trumpet sounds. Imagine if you're asleep. Those of you who served in the military, particularly ground forces like the Marines or the Army, when you hear Reveille in the morning, you were sleeping good, man. You hit that, about 3 o'clock in the morning, you hit that lick, man, where you go into that zone. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you're sleeping light at about 10, 10, 11. Then all of a sudden you hit this zone where you don't even know where you are, and then all of a sudden now a brash horn says, you, you wake up, huh? you hate that sound. But it's the sound of waking you up because the sign of the resurrection is Gabriel blowing his horn. And the dead comes out of the grave, not the graveyard over there on Cullen Yaw, Memorial Gardens. The graveyard of our ignorance, the graveyard of the ghetto, the graveyard of our poverty, the graveyard of our doubt and our disbelief that God would love us enough and come himself and raise us from the dead to be the example for the rest of humanity. That's what we are. That's who we are. That's our value in God's eyes. All praises due to our love. So once God comes and he shows you this kind of love, gives you this kind of attention, gives you wisdom that nobody can defeat. And some of us are so ignorant, we think argument is debate. Let's go to our next. As y'all know, I always go here. Let me give you that which distinguishes us from others. Supreme wisdom, please. It is these supreme wisdom lessons that registered Muslims have and are given. Lesson number two, question and answer number 18. What is the duty of a civilized person? Once you've learned civilization, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, love, peace, and happiness, once you've learned 
all of the sciences, the science of everything in life, yes, sir. what is your duty? Keep it to yourself? You got light? You gonna hide it under a bushel basket? I'm good. I'm good. Come to a brother selling the paper. Sister selling the paper. Uh, final call. Final call. I'm good. What do you mean you're good? We know you're good. We're trying to make you better. Yes, I'm good. I got good for you, all right. Good is not good enough. You got to be the best today. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. But what is the duty of a civilized man? Let's give him the answer, my beloved. Yes, sir. The duty of a civilized man or civilized person is to teach the uncivilized people who are savage, civilization, righteousness, and the knowledge of them himself, and the science of everything in life, love, peace, and happiness. Yes, that is our duty. Whatever God has blessed us with, of what we think is an advantage really is not an advantage if you won't share it. Yes, you lose it when you try to hoard it. Right. You and I are likened to the monkey. Shaka Zulu was teaching the white mason, you know what happens when you want to catch a monkey? He says you, you put a shiny object or you put a peanut in a jar with a narrow opening. An opening just large enough to get his hand through. And he'll go in here and he'll reach in here and he'll grab the peanut. But because he makes a fist and doesn't want any other monkey to get that peanut, he can't get his arm out. And that's how they catch a monkey. Well, that's how we get caught. We get a little advantage. We get a little nut. And we get caught with that little nut instead of opening it up our hand and give it, sharing that nut with the people so we don't get caught up in the wiles of Satan. Yes, Y'all okay? Yes, sir. All right. We have a duty to teach our people civilization. All right. So look, brothers and sisters, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teach us that a good Christian is a good Muslim and a good Muslim is a good Christian. Yes, sir. And why? Because the Messiah, the anointed would one comes to knock down the walls that separate us one from another. Yes, That's what he's, he's born to do. These walls are erected by the blinding touch of Satan, who has deceived the whole world according to the book of Revelation 12 and 9. He deceived the whole world. So you, well, I, I, I'm, I'm going down there with them Muslims, see, they don't, you know. I'm trying to tell you that the whole world has been deceived and you're seeing it being uncovered right now. Yes, We're being distracted, brothers and sisters. Yeah, every tub has a set on its own bottom. Each one of us is going to have to answer for what we have and have not done. But for them to be attacking Michael Jackson 10 years after he's dead, for them to do what they're doing to R. Kelly in front of our eyes, listen to me very well, brothers and sisters, for what they did to Bill Cosby, Yes, all of us have to answer for what we did for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad says in that day, which is this day, our righteousness will sustain us. And only our righteousness will sustain us. However, whether we're good, bad, or ugly, Allah teaches us that we are Muslims or meaning one who submits to the will of God by nature. We're the righteous by nature. So when we are other than self, what he does is he knows this is going on all along. And as long as he can make money off of you, as long as you're useful, he will continue to allow you to sell dope for him. He don't want to sold it to you. Negro don't own a boat, plane, ship, or train. Ain't no way that that dope coming in through the port of entry and finding its way in the hood without their help. He know you ain't got no job. But then he see you pay cash for a car. He know you don't have a job. But he's watching you at Papa Do's buying everybody something to eat. He know you ain't got a job, but you in the club making it rain. When a few days ago you couldn't even make it a sprinkle. He knows. He allows you to go so far, and when you 
have, are of no further use to him, he'll drop you in the grease. Michael Jackson wanted his masters. R. Kelly wanted his masters. You're not hearing me. Bill Cosby wanted to buy NBC. See? Now here's Bill Cosby was our icon. See, this is how they do. Disappointment and dissatisfaction. It's like that old R&B song. I think it's the intruders. There's a thin line between love and hate. I don't know whether y'all look it up on your Google phone. Y'all can smart check me, you know. It's a thin line between love and hate. Y'all know that song, right? Well, what's the thin line between love and hate? It's betrayal. So here, Bill Cosby is the, is the Hustables. He's the father we all want to be. And all of a sudden, they show him to be freak of the week. How do you feel? Michael Jackson. Man, when Michael Jackson died, I cried. No, I did. I grew up with Michael Jackson when he was with A, B, C. It's easy as one, two, three. When you little Michael Jackson, man, that's all we sung in the hood. He grew up to be this god of music. That when he stepped out on the stage, all he had to do was like this. And they start, they, you see people crying. I said, damn, he was over in Romania, one of them places, of Bulgaria, one of them. He stepped down on stage and he did like this. <laughs> and men and the women, with white women, you're about, and they were crying, Michael. Then he started getting conscious. They don't really care about us. What? Wait a minute. He started getting conscious. He started doing things. He gave back Little Richard all of his masters, all his publishing rights. He owned the Beatles catalog. Do you understand what that, the Beatles? He owned their catalog. That's worth billions. They started coming after him. FBI investigated him 10 years. Nothing. County prosecutor investigated him. 14 times he's found innocent, yet Two accusers with no other side of the story put on HBO and you and I fall for that crap, man? Come on, man. R. Kelly? Listen, there ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of bump and grind. You know what was going on. Come on. Come on. You knew what he was singing, man. You, you know, that was your... Bro, if you had, had no game, you put on some R. Kelly just be looking at him. knew what time it was. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Come on. It wasn't just, I believe I can fly. It wasn't just that. That wasn't, that wasn't moving you, brother. Unless you was getting high watching Space Jam. Yeah. Damn, I believe I can fly, too. But you put on them song, boy, and you, yeah. You be looking at it like that, yeah. You knew what time it was. But the man's artistic genius was good enough to make them millions till they decided to destroy him. Nothing excuses what they might have done to children or to women. I'm not, I'm not doing that, sister. I want to let you know your value is such that, that, and your children and our children's value is such that nothing excuses that. But if you don't see the bigger picture, that our enemy doesn't care anything about you or your children or the children or the women that they're supposed to have abused. There's something bigger going on here. See, because to destroy black masculinity in front of you, to make you distrust black masculinity, is to disconnect you and fulfill the scripture whereby it said, come, let us deal wisely with them. Let us kill all boy babies and spare the female." So now Terry Crews has to apologize for saying that male child has to have a father figure in his life. Now the, 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 the feminists, or no, what, the, the glad, uh, the gay people went after him and he had to buck dance and apologize. And many of us grew up without our presence of our father. We long for a father, man. That's why Farrakhan can attract us. He's the only man that can call for a million and nearly two million show up. And whether our brothers accept 
the teachings are not, they said, far come my man. I'm still hit this 40, but far come my man. See? So, who do you look to? I look to God. What, what, what is God? Is he a spook? A spirit? Puff of smoke? God is everywhere? Yet he's to come? He's coming to the day of judgment? You will see him in the day of judgment? Well, where was he all the time if you didn't see him? That now you're going to see him. If he was everywhere, you see him everywhere. And maybe you do, but you don't recognize him. I'm taking too long. I'm off script. The Messiah is the anointed one. He comes to knock down these walls. I'm a Muslim. I'm a Christian. I'm a Hebrew. I'm a this. I'm a that. Oh, shut up. If we are able to extract principles from the truth that we find and able to pull the diamonds out of the dunghill of falsehood that's been put on these diamonds, then and only then we'll be able to do the work of God and have value. In Ephesians 4, 5, and 6, it says the scriptures declare the one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's what the Messiah comes to do. So when I reflected on this past Savior's Day in Chicago, the lyrics of this song came up in my head. I don't know why I started. You know, I ain't the kind of weepy, crying kind of brother. People know me. They've been around me. I very, You can very rarely catch me crying about something, but minister cry all the time. I call him Jeremiah. He's the crying. He's the weeping, crying prophet all the time. Minister always crying. Me? If something has to really hit me, which it did when I heard this song and I thought about reflecting on Savior's Day. And what it is, is is that I finally come to grips with the fact that we're walking with Minister Farrakhan and we're walking with him. We're walking with Jesus and you and I are his disciples in this modern room. Now, when you come to that realization, brothers and sisters, it's, it's, it's other than just offering an argument and pointing to scripture and inferring something yes, or seeing him do something that, that kind of looks like, no, when you come to the realization that you're walking with the modern day Jesus in a modern day Rome with a modern day Caesar yes, and a modern day Pharisees and and Sadducees and Sanhedrin plotting against the modern day Jesus, then you begin, something begins to rattle on your head and you begin to realize not only who you are, but whose you are. And you have to act accordingly. Hear me, brothers and sisters, I, I'm, I'm trying to do the best I can with this. Here's some of the lyrics to the song. Just listen to those lyrics. Go to the next slide, brother, please. Oh, happy day. You know, but they repeat it, oh, happy day, oh, happy day. But it's, oh, happy day. When Jesus washed. For years, I thought he said when Jesus walked. No, it's when Jesus washed. He said, when Jesus washed, he washed my sins away, oh, happy day. Then going to say, oh, happy day. He taught me how to watch, fight, and pray. Fight and pray. And live rejoicing every, every day, oh, happy day. So I want you to think about that, brothers and sisters. Edwin Hawkins wrote that song, Oh Happy Day. So what makes it a happy day? When Jesus washed, washed my sins away. I thought, wash what? That's what I thought, well, what is he washing? Wash your sins away, but what is he washing to wash my sins away? Is he washing my heart? Is he washing my mind? What, what is he washing? So I looked in the scriptures and I thought to myself, what does, what does being taught to watch, fight, and pray, and rejoice every day have to do with washing sins away and ultimately being a happy day? I hope y'all okay. Yes, In the book of John, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 17, we're given a picture of Jesus washing his disciples' feet after the evening meal just before the Passover festival. And it is just before the Passover festival, this is reading from the scripture, New International Version, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And we were with Minister Farrakhan's Savior's Day. I'm telling you, this was the best Savior's Day ever, but there was something about it that I just couldn't put my finger on. 
again, until I heard this song and start triggering in my head. Go to verse 2. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of uh, Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Verse 9, then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. That is why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put his clothes on and returned to his place. And he said, do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for, I, for that is what I am. Now that I am your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master nor is the messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Y'all okay? Yes, sir. So here's a picture of one of the last gatherings of Jesus and his disciples. Judas is revealed, but the disciples didn't catch on. Washing the feet only versus the whole body shows us that for the most part, the disciples were clean. But there are aspects of that body of disciples that had to be cleansed because of where they had been walking and where their feet would take one of them that is into an act of betrayal. The Savior, Master Fahd Muhammad, his servant, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the Apostle, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, teach us that we are the righteous, but we have been made other than self. In other words, our deviation from righteousness is a betrayal of our very nature to incline towards righteous thinking and conduct. We are taught that 75% of what you read in the Gospels is prophecy and 25% is actual history. So what are we watching take place right now in our midst? What we're watching right now taking place in our midst is fulfillment of what was written. Satan's desire, as I said before, is to make you think that what is happening now happened 2,000 years ago, when the truth is we are walking through the books of the Bible and the Holy Quran as we speak. Y'all all right? So now back to the song. Oh, happy day, when Jesus washed, he washed my sins away. Oh, happy day, he taught me how to watch, fight, and pray, fight and pray, and live rejoicing every, every day, oh, happy day. Now, why watch? Why watch? We watch because in the Garden of Gethsemane, the disciples went to sleep. Sin has that effect on us, brothers and sisters. It puts us in a state of unconsciousness. We be sleepwalking. We be in a fog, a state of suspended animation, and ultimately into a, dial, a downward spiral. So he taught us to watch, fight, and pray. Why do we have to fight? Sleep is powerful. Some of y'all right now fight and sleep as I speak. You ever watch your baby fight and sleep? Your children fight and sleep? They're trying to stay awake, but sleep is powerful. Sin is that way. It does that to us, brothers and sisters. Sin has to be resisted. It has to be fought against. 
We have to wage war against the inclination to go against the very nature of God that is in, that is in us from him. Allah in the Holy Quran 3030 says, So set thy face for religion being upright, the nature made by Allah in which he has created men. There's no altering Allah's creation. That is the right religion, but most people know not. Your nature is to be one with God. Satan's job is to separate you from your very nature. Going against your very nature is what is putting us to sleep as a people and as individuals. Y'all all right? The Holy Quran gives us that. The right religion. That's, that's right religion. It's to do unto others as you have them do unto you. The right religion is to want for your brother and sister what you want for yourself. You follow those golden rules, you can pretty wrap up the Bible and the Holy Quran right there. Y'all okay? You know, brothers and sisters, when you're swimming at the beach, go down to Daytona Beach, Florida, someplace, and you, you're down in Galveston, there's what they call rip tides. Meaning you're there and you walk in and you up waist deep. Some of y'all don't know how to swim. Black folk, I mean, your sister don't want to mess your hair up. So you ain't, I ain't, I'm not putting my head under that water. But there's a rip tide that will grab your behind and snatch you under. You don't swim against it. You don't swim with it. You have to swim across it, away from it. See, brothers and sisters, sometimes we go along with sin to get along with it. And sometimes we think we're resisting it, but it's sucking us deeper. Because our inability to handle our own emotions. Y'all all right? I'm almost finished. We're going home early today. We're going home early today. We don't need a whole lot of preaching. We need work. God didn't hear me. All right. So you have to swim across the tide, okay? Lest you be swept out to sea. And we be lost in that sea of sin. Holy Quran says, why fight? Because the Holy Quran says in, two and, uh, in 216, it says, fighting is enjoined on you, though it is disliked by you. And it may be that you dislike a thing while it's good for you. And it may be that you love a thing while it's evil for you, and Allah knows while you know not. So we have to watch, we have to fight, then we have to pray. So why pray? Holy Quran 25 and 77 says, My Lord would not care for you were it not for your prayer. Now indeed you have rejected, so the punishment will come. And in 40 and 60, Allah says, and your Lord says, pray to me, I will answer you. Those who disdain my service will surely enter hell abased. In John, 17th chapter of John, brothers and sisters, Jesus offers up three prayers. Y'all all right? Yeah. Hang with me, brothers and sisters. We're going to go. We're going to go. Jesus offers up three prayers. He offers up a prayer to be glorified. When the third verse, he says, now this is eternal life, that they know you, talking about God, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Second prayer, a prayer for his disciples. Verse 9, I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those of you have given me, for they are yours. And then he offers a third prayer, which is a prayer for the believers. And it says in the 20th verse, my prayer is not for them, meaning his disciples alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. So, we're to watch, we're to fight, we're to pray, and then we're to rejoice every, every day. So why rejoice every day? Holy Quran 3, 1 and 71 says they rejoice for Allah's favor and his grace and that Allah wastes not the reward of the believers. If you have done so much as given one dollar, sold one paper, invited somebody to the mosque, did a good deed in the name of Allah, you will get your reward. The sin of ignorance is our impatience with apparently the slow reward Allah gives us for faithful service. I done did all this. I done sacrificed. I done did all this all these years and look at what I got. 
the reward is coming. But will you be patient? Why well, I'm going to give you kibbles and bits when I got four knocks waiting for you. You going to settle for some two chains when I got the whole gold bouillon of Fort Knox waiting for you? We settle for what's cheap, quick, fast, makes us feel good, temporarily, instead of waiting for that which has is bountiful, is bountyless. Oh, I don't think you get it. I'm not telling you to wait for pie in the sky after you die. We don't teach that. Heaven and hell is not some places you going up in the sky or down in the ground. Heaven and hell are states of mind and condition. The state of mind we're in right now, the condition that we're in right now is hell. If you want heaven, brothers and sisters, change your mind and your condition will follow. Our community looks the way it looks. Trash. We just throw trash down and we don't even think about it. Why? Because we got trashy minds. Get at the stoplight, roll down the window, drop the, the beer can out. Drop the piece of paper. Why? That's the way we think. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Our community looks like we think. So, why rejoice every day? No matter what we accomplish, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of what Minister Farrakhan said to his ministers on 10-11-15, not 10-10-15, the day after the 20th anniversary of the Million Man March. He called us up to his suite, and he asked us, he sat us in front of him, and he asked us, he said, what did you see, what did you hear? And he said, I hope you don't think that what we accomplished out there, we did that. He said, that's the work of Allah. That's the work of God. You're not hearing me. So for the minister, all praise is due to Allah has to be our refrain. That has to be our refrain. No matter what we do of good, give praise to God. And even when you're suffering or going through something, give praise to God because guess what? A live dog is better than a dead lion. There's no praise of God in the grave. So if you're alive and suffering hell, at least you're alive, brother and sister. And there's a chance if you would just get up off your knees and go to work in the name of a mighty God. So in John 8 and 56... Jesus said, your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. Not 2,000 years ago. Right now, the modern day Jesus, Abraham said he just wanted to be a wayfarer. He just wanted to be passing through where you and I are sitting. We're taking it for granted. Why do you think they call them prophets? P-R-O means for. C, they foresaw this time. They saw you and I walking in the day of the time of the Messiah, the end of this world, and the introduction of the kingdom of God. He just wanted to be here. The prophets were given a peep. They saw it. They saw you and I sitting in these seats. They saw us under the blinding touch of Satan. They saw us fighting with the beast. They saw his world coming down. They saw a kingdom coming in. They saw you and I. Even the least of us is as great as Solomon in his glory. Abraham rejoiced in just wanting to be in this day and time. John 14 and 28 says, Ye have heard how I say unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you will rejoice because I say I go unto the Father for my father is greater than I. Greatest Savior's Day ever. Best Savior's Day ever. But we knew, looking at the minister, we was drinking up every moment we could get, looking at him, seeing him. And, and, and honestly, brother and sister, during the graduation, 
Mr. Farrakhan, very quickly, when we're all standing, clapping, applauding, and all that, he will stop us and say, sit down and start giving us the greeting. This is one time I noticed he allowed us to applaud and scream and holler. Go watch the video. He let us do it. And even though he tried to hush us, we kept going. And he didn't stop us till a while till he was ready to deliver his remarks. I've never seen him do that before. See? We were taking everything in this Savior's day. At least I did. I tried to watch everything. I tried to take every aspect of it in. So people rejoice regardless of their temporary circumstance and they're filled with gratitude and that is they are grateful. In the Holy Quran Allah says why would Allah chastise you if you're grateful and believe? Allah is ever multiply rewards knowing also in 76.24, Allah says, So wait patiently for the judgment of thy Lord, and obey not a sinner or an ungrateful one among them. So here's the lesson Jesus Farrakhan is teaching us out of the Gospel of John. You call me teacher, Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Oh, he has proved himself. He has proved himself, brothers and sisters. He's a master teacher. And he's Lord by God's permission. You better hear me. He said, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, also should you wash one another's feet. He said, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Verily, truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. He always says, I am a student of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he taught me and us to be student ministers. I am his student. He's a student of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was taught from the mouth of God. We're students. And minister means servant. When I sat at his table in 2005, when he was here for the Essence Festival, Mr. Farrakhan asked me, why would you study for your PhD? I, I quoted Isaiah for him to rebuild the wasted cities. He said, oh, okay, brother. He said, well, you know, you'll be called student minister doctor at that time, Robert Muhammad. He said, because minister is the greater title. He said, because minister means servant. And whatever you know, brother, it is to serve the people. And then he said, brother, I got a name in mind for you. And I, I waited almost 12 years to get to me. <laughs> but I was patient. So he named me his name, Abdul Halim. And I thank Allah for that. I thank Allah for that. Then the Jesus says, now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Where's your blessing going to come from, sister and brother? Your blessing is going to come from washing each other's feet. Serving each other. Like we serve him. We got to look after one another, brothers and sisters. We got to love each other with a, such an intense love that it overcomes all of our faults. So we can look past each other's faults and see each other's needs and meet those needs and then we're stronger. We got to look past each other's faults, see each other's needs, serve each other, so that through that process we become stronger. In the article in the final call, How Democracy, How to Protect Democracy, Minister Farrakhan said, What does democracy mean? The founding fathers of this country lived in Europe and they saw the era of government that they experienced. They wanted to frame a constitution, Minister Farrakhan said that would guard this nation against those things that they suffered in Europe, they did a pretty good job in what they wrote. In a democracy where people have the right to choose their leaders, people lead with the consent of the governed. That means they, the leaders, are not the masters, they are our servants. So we have to be servant leaders. Not just me to you, but you to the people. You and I have to be servant leaders to the people. 
We don't lord over them because we got a little supreme wisdom. We can quote a Bible and the Quran, and we, we know a little bit because we learned in the mosque. We have to serve our people, man. Lower our wing of mercy to our people in the condition that they're in. God has blessed us. You bless them. I'm saved. But there's some, some folks up in here that's not saved. Okay, what if I get saved? Then what? What am I saved for? So that I can get into heaven? What about everybody else? You're saved so that you can save other people. You are raised so you can raise others. You're cleaned up so you can clean up others. You ain't hearing me. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. So I reiterate again out of John. 14th and that 15th verse. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I've set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. By washing our feet, by serving us, Mr. Farcon is showing us how to be faithful and not betray the mission of resurrection. He has shown us how to wash away the sin of false pride and arrogance through service to one another. He has shown us how to be a perfect servant. Mr. Farrakhan has been the watchman. Watch, remember now, watch and pray. Watch, fight, and pray. He's been the watchman on the wall. He is the last man standing in the way of our enemy, totally destroying us without us having a clue of what's happening. He has shown us how to fight against our enemy, the enemy without by conquering the enemy within self. Mr. Farrakhan, in the study guide that we studied this weekend, and that's why, I mean, it's Friday, brothers and sisters, please. The study guide, the God within? Whoo! Let me read something to you. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Mr. Farrakhan says, Satan is that of the human being that if given a chance to express itself would go contrary to God. Satan has been with the human from the very beginning of God's creation, but he had no form or expression. So God said, I'm going to give Satan form and expression and then give him dominion and power to see if the evil is equal to good. The God of creation loves experimentation and greatest experiments that God has ever done are with himself and the human being. God when God shares himself with us, he gives us a problem to overcome. We have to struggle with the only force that is in us, which is the life force. There is no other force but God. There is but one life, and that is divine life. God gives you life. How, how do we live with it? If we live it in a negative way, under the influence of our own life force, and will not struggle to master it, then we'll become a devil in our person. There is no devil outside of us giving us hell. It is the devil of ourselves raising hell with self and on the earth. The more we struggle to gain mastery over self, the closer we come to God. It is faith in God that stretches us towards him. It is our faith in him that makes us move closer to him, to connect with him. And when we connect with him, heaven and earth meet. All praises due to Allah for the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. So, brothers and sisters, in my conclusion, no drugs, no cigarette, no food, no sex addition, uh, uh, addictions should be able to control us. Fear, hatred, envy, poverty should be no barrier to us achieving what we will. Psalm said we are gods. Children of the most high God, if you're a child of God, then why don't we act like God? Come on, come on. You said something. Come on. How can a cigarette hold you down? Come on, man, I can't wait to get out this meat, man. I'm going to smoke that Negro talk, man. I thought he said he was going to end on, quick, man. Man. Come on. man, I can't wait to get this cool I left in the car. Man, how does a cigarette this big control you and I? Come on. Come on. That, that Negro man talking about me, he was looking at me. I can't help but look at you. I got four eyes up here. I can't help but look at you. He was looking at me. I'm going to get high, man. He was, like he was reading my mind. I'm going, how you let a bag of weed control you? Why are you thinking about that bag of weed you sitting up in here? 
You thirsty? Get some water. No, I'm going to get a 40, man, ice cold 40. What? What's wrong with you? How you let that control you? We ain't got no 12-step program up in here. We got a one-step program. It's called Just Quit. Just quit. You God, quit. The minister has taught us how our lives should be one consistent prayer. Our lives should be a prayer. Not just our five daily prayers. Our life should be a prayer. Everything we do should be for the glory of God. No matter what has happened, the pure of heart will see God in everything, even the workings of Satan. Because in the end, the devil is only to purify us. Hell is only to purify us for God's purpose. When we get rid of our false pride, when God breaks us down to the bone, man, when we're down to the bone marrow, when you're at the lowest of low, when you thought you was high on that horse, you thought you were all that in a bag of chips, and a 12-inch foot-long subway <laughs> with a refillable drink and a chocolate chip cookie. You thought you was all of that. And God breaks you down to nothing. And you look to the hills, there's no help from there. You look to the government, there's no help from there. You look to your family, there's no help from there. You look to your spouse, there's no help from there. You look to your children, there's no help from there. You look to your siblings, there's no help from there. You look to God, and God lifts you up where you belong. Then you know. Then you know. The scripture said, blessed is the pure of heart, for they shall see God in everything. You can't kill your brother, you can't kill your sister if you really thought they were God. You pull a pistol on God? You stick God, you jack God out of his car? You would rape God? You would abuse little God? If you really thought that what I said from the beginning, God is man and man is God, there's a supreme being, but all of us are gods in our own way. We're all gods individually. We have talents and skills nobody else has, but the reason why we're not effective is we're not working together. We're not working together. There ain't but one basketball. All five of us can't dribble it at the same time. Give up the ball. I'm, I'm open. You got five Negroes on you guard and you throw me the ball, man, man. Blessed is the pure of heart, so they shall see God. Why don't we look for God in one another? If we wash our feet, meaning you don't care where you and I have trod. Because back then, they had no sidewalks. They walked where the camels and the donkeys walked. And they had no nights. No Adidas. They had no heels. They was walking in sandals, stepping in poo-poo. Mud, urine. So for Jesus to wash their feet, the sinless one to wash their feet? So why should we care where each one of us have come from? Let's wash each other's feet. Y 
yes, brother, all praise is due to Allah. And no matter what is coming to us, just keep that in mind. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, I can't promise you you won't get a bump on your head. I can't promise you you won't go to jail. He said, I can't promise you you won't lose your life, but this I promise you, we will be the winners. Victory. We'll be the winners living or dead. In the recent final call, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says these words. He, Allah, has power over everything, small or great. He will let you, listen, he's talking to the enemy now. He will let you kill a few of us that he might be justified in killing all of you for the murder of all the righteous you and your people have slain since you were created. That's a bold man. Then he said, we will, by the help of Allah, unite. We will get some of this earth by the help of Allah that we can call our own. So in the end, brothers and sisters, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote, message of black man is, is more important to teach separation than prayer. He didn't say that he that we shouldn't pray. But I don't want to be separated with no folks that don't pray. Because if you're not if you don't pray, prayer should lead to charity. So if you're not praying, that's you're not charitable. And that's not just giving money. That's time, your talent, your skill, your love for your people to go out with this word and deliver this word to our people in the form of this Final Call newspaper or at least invite them to come hear what you've heard. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. I'm almost gone, believe it or not. I'm almost gone. So, I too sing, oh, happy day. When Farrah Khan washed... He washed my sins away by teaching me how to serve others, to watch, to fight, to pray, and to rejoice every day. So how about you? Don't you want to rejoice? Then come with us to serve. Watch, fight, and pray. And you too will rejoice every day for the victory is assured for the believers. My brothers and sisters, my invitation to you, to this great nation of Islam, is now. It's time that we serve our people, and by that be all be exalted in the eyes of God. We're living in the modern day Rome, the modern day Egypt, the modern day Babylon. So brothers and sisters, I invite you to accept your own and be yourself. And come on up to this nation of Islam and do that which God would have you to do. As it says in this, the teachings 2.0, compiled by our brother, Brother Jesse Muhammad. I thank Allah for this brother's faithfulness to the words, every dot, every comma, every period, every semicolon that Minister Farrakhan uttered. My brother captured and put into this book. How does prayer work? Minister Farrakhan has asked. Brother Farrakhan responds, prayer works when the heart of one who is calling on God is sincere and trusting and believes, touching the innermost desires of the human being. The God is anxious to fulfill it. Every creature looks for food, finds it. So God has created a means of sustenance for every living thing. And the same way other creatures are made satisfied by food, clothing, and shelter, so we will be satisfied with these basic necessities of life and further to find and fulfill our purpose in life. You're not here by accident. You're here for a reason and a season. None of us is promised tomorrow, brothers and sisters. We have eternity before we're born and eternity after we die, but we got this little dash in between. We are on our funeral program. It will say sunrise and sunset. A little dash, trillions of years ahead, trillions of years behind. All you get is this dash. Come on and run this race with us, brothers and sisters, and let's tie ourselves to the eternal purpose of God. Thank you for listening. May Allah bless you. I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah.
Please be seated very quickly. Then I'm going to ask you to stand back up. How many of you believe what you heard today, or how many of you are visiting with us for your first time? This is your first time being with us today. Give them all a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. We are honored by your presence. We don't take for granted you could have been doing something else. We know we're in between seasons, but you could have been doing something else, and we thank God that you would take time out of your busy schedule to be with us. But at the same time, brother and sister, there was somebody last night before we set our clocks forward, laid out their clothes. They were intending to go somewhere. They had a Google map all printed out. But the only ride they got was from the medical examiner today. You were blessed to make it. So don't you take it for granted. We won't take you for granted. Don't you take it for granted. Life is too fragile and too fleeting for us to take it for granted. But of what we said today, how many of you believe what you heard today to be true and good for God's people? Raise your hand if you believe it. All praise is due to Allah. And if you believe what you heard today to be true and good for God's people, and whether it's your first or your 1,000th time visiting with us, how many of you today would like to accept the teachings of Honorable Elijah Muhammad, join on with Mosque 45, unite with this mosque, come on and be a part of the nation of Islam, and come on, brothers and sisters, and let's go save our people. If you would, stand up, come on over here and shake my hand on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Like a natural woman. 